allow me, if you will, to set the scene. You're a mission maker, and you've decided that you want your players to be involved in a more dynamic mission. Be that when they destroy something, or when they kill a player or a higher value target, or something like that. You want them to be met with a counterattack or an artillery barrage, or even just to complete a task that says, oh, well done, you've managed to kill something. To do that, you're going to be using an ally trigger. In front of me here, I have three examples of a, a live trigger, which detects where there are a unit, a group of units, or a percentage of a squad has been wiped by the players or by another AI, and then activates the trigger accordingly. We're going to start with the far left one, which is the easiest uh, presentation of this, and then we're going to work gradually right to the most advanced on the right hand side here. I've also thrown in some uh, outcomes for these triggers for each of them, where there's a different color flare. And on this example, uh, where the reinforcements for Blue 4 are held at this waypoint until this trigger is activated. More on what you can do with the trigger when it's been activated in another video. So the first example here, in order to check whether something is alive or dead and then make a decision off of it, you need to actually have a variable name for what you're looking at. Look at this Humvee here. We want it to be a thing that we check if it's alive or dead. So we're going to need to give it a variable name. I've gone ahead and given it the variable name of car for ease of reference. Now if we go into a trigger here, we have a very simple condition which just checks whether the car is alive. And if it isn't alive, it triggers this trigger, which is a mouthful, I know. Just to break it down so that you're fully aware of what this condition is, I'll go through it. So our first big thing here is the alive function. Uh, this is part of the uh, Bohemia Interactive part of the game. So it's the engine itself. And what this does is it returns a boolean, which is a true or false, for whether this car is living. So if this car is alive, it returns true. If this car is dead, it returns false. Now the problem is the trigger only activates when the condition is true. So when this car is actually dead, it's no longer alive, which means that that part without this exclamation mark would not activate the trigger. So that brings in the exclamation mark itself. Now the exclamation mark is an inversion. It's uh, essentially a not. Uh, so what this actually is, is when the car is not alive, which would return true, because when the car is dead, it, it is not alive. Therefore, the trigger is activated. In layman's terms, this means that when you rocket this vehicle, this trigger activates, which then completes this task and also fires this flare into the sky, which you'll see a little bit later on. Moving on then to specific vehicles or people. Uh, I'm using people for all of these, but you can just use vehicles or manned vehicles. It makes no real difference. Uh, the logic is exactly the same. And you can also use caches like um, ammo boxes and such, if you would. Okay, so in this, we have our task, which is to assassinate targets. I've named these people target one through target four with an underscore between the target and the number that they are. This is because we need to check for making sure that each of these people are dead before we actually activate this trigger. To do that, we need to do a little bit more uh, coding. So what we do here is we add this double and symbol, which is an and statement. Uh, that means that everything to the left and everything to the right of this symbol must be true for this to also work. So we have our target one here. That checks if the target is dead. That's great. It then goes beyond this section and it also checks if this is also dead. And then it must check that also this is dead. And finally, that target four is also dead. Only when every single one of these is dead will this trigger activate. There are other things you can do in this trigger uh, to change the conditions for when something activates. We will not be touching this today. That would be in another video. To put it simply in layman's terms, if target one is not alive and also target two is not alive 
and also target 3 is not alive, and also target 4 is not alive, the trigger activates. And when the trigger activates, the flare is fired into the sky, and blue 4 can move past this waypoint over to this waypoint. It also completes his task. We shall see again in a minute. And finally, we have our more, most complicated implementation of this. So, in armor, uh, it's well known that when you put AI down, it's a 90% chance of the AI being stuck in the wall at some point. So when you want to kill an entire squad, or a group of squads, it may not be beneficial to you to have an area marker, which says that OP4 is not present. You could do the implementation to make sure an area is clear of OP4 by putting down a marker, or a, a, a trigger rather, and just saying when uh, OP4 is no longer present, it activates, okay? This is an alternative implementation of that, which is more reliable when it comes to uh, AI glitching into walls, as I've just tried to demonstrate. So, to do this, we cannot reference each of the individual people because that would drive you insane and crazy, and anybody who tries to do that manually using our method here is going to go crazy and probably lose their mind. Instead, we can reference the group, and we're going to give the in it of the group a name. So this entire group here is now called OP4 group, which is what we're going to reference it as. Our kill OP4 squad here is also the uh, task. Now in our trigger conditions, we're actually changing the trigger conditions just slightly here. So we're checking to see that each of the units in OP4 group is alive. And when the amount of alive units in OP4 group is less than or equal to one, this trigger will then activate. So this bit here checks for the current unit that it's verifying to see if it's actually alive. And it goes through each of the different units in that group, checking to see if it's alive. And when that number for the total number of alive units is less than or equal to one, it, it then will go return as true. Trigger activates. This task has been completed. This flare over here will fire. And that's all fun and games. So the reason, uh, as I've stated before, we give it a leeway of one troop or two troops is to make sure that if one is stuck in a wall, that it's still completable. And the amount that you should put down as the leeway is totally dependent upon how screwy the map you're working on is. For example, in Lithium or in um, Fallujah Bad, those two maps, um, or Fallujah rather, you're more likely to put a high number up as the uh, potential number, um, amount of survivors because that could be uh, more easily, it's more easy to get your AI trapped in those maps otherwise. Okay, so we're gonna go into the game now and we're going to uh, trigger each of these tasks to show you how they work in game. Okay, so starting off here, we'll start with the hardest one uh, here or the hardest one to implement anyway. So realistically, I could kill all of these AI, or I could kill two of them. And once I've killed two of them, uh, the trigger will activate. So there's our first one. The trigger has activated, we still have our task. We're going to kill the second one. And there we go, the trigger will activate. And then there'll be a flare somewhere over there in the distance, if I can look up far enough. There we go, little red flare. We can still kill the last guy, but it won't reactivate the trigger. If only I could hit him, right. So, onto our uh, individual HVT triggers. Oh, we have to kill all of these men before the trigger activates. Now, to prove that the reinforcement system works over here, we have our hunter. It is at the waypoint over there. And it's going to stay there, regardless of what I do. I could shoot at it, 
until this trigger is activated. So let's kill the guy on the right. And the trigger won't activate because there's still three survivors. We're going to kill the guy on our left. And the trigger won't activate because there's now two survivors. Now let's kill the last two. If I could hit the last one, that'd be great. There we go. Now the trigger will activate. And if I look over there, you will see the hunter begin to move. And a flare will go up. And the hunter will stop about there. That's where I put the waypoint. There we go. Right, finally, here we have our destroyer vehicle. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a rocket out and we're going to hit it with the moors. The vehicle has been destroyed and the destroyer vehicle task has been completed. So there we go. That's your tutorial on how to create a destroy or killed triggered uh, trigger. Oh, there you are, it's activated. Hopefully that helped you in some way. Uh, this series that we're working on is essentially a mission maker's guide to triggers scripting for Rooster Teeth Gaming Community, uh, but it's available to everybody. If you did find this helpful, go ahead and share it with your friends, and uh, hopefully we can get a little bit of traction on it. If you have any suggestions for one of the next videos, please do leave it in the comments. Uh, we appreciate you watching, and have a good afternoon.